understanding then the new man in you will prosper what kills the new man in you whenever the new man is not fed
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, we want to welcome all of you in the presence of God. You are most welcome in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the praises go up, when the worship goes up, the presence of God descends. And I believe that between me and you, the presence of God is. Yes, you are all most welcome in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are in the land, good morning. If you are still in the diaspora, I believe it is still night. But we are back again to see what God has for us. And today, this is what I know. That the Lord is going to touch your life. The Lord is going to bless you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, you are welcome. Lord Jesus, you are welcome. Holy Spirit of God, you are welcome. Angels of God, come and minister with me and also minister unto the people that are in the presence of God right now in Jesus' mighty name. And wherever you are, you declare and shout aloud, Amen, in Jesus' name. Yes, we are still on the journey. We are looking at the life in us, the life in you. And this is what I believe that God has given you a life so that you may live better in this world god has not given you his life for you to suffer in it he has given you his life so that you become better in life so that you do greater things in life in jesus mother name yes we continue because i believe that today there is a lot that god has for everyone who is in his presence the lord has a lot of in stock for every one of you in Jesus' mighty name. We begin from the book of Second Timothy, chapter two, verses twenty-six, and we're going to take our readings from NIV version. In the book of Second Timothy, chapter two, verses twenty-six, the Bible says, "And that they will come to their senses, and escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them captives." Who has, taken, who has taken them captive to do his will? I repeat, in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 26, we are taking our readings from NIV version. The Bible says, And that they will come to their senses, and escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. People's senses are taken when they become the captives of the devil. And child of God, we are still looking at this other side also. Yes, we have this life in God, but every time and again, we've got the accuser of the brethren. Who is Satan? Who is, who is the devil? Who is ever fighting against the kingdom of God in this world? The devil never wants the kingdom of God to advance. But it is you and I who have received the life of God who are going to make this kingdom advance. And God is counting on you and God is counting on me. When he has given us this life that we live in him, there is also the devil who never wants you to be godly in this world. Remember that he has the control over this world though he does not own this world. As First John says chapter 5 verses 19 that this whole world is under the control of the evil one. What he has done is to make sure that he controls as many people as possible so that he may destroy them for the kingdom of God not to advance. But glory be to God, as the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11 verses 12, that the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent people take it by force. Yes, the kingdom of God advances forcefully because there is that war that is ever raging against the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. So child of God, this is what I want you to know. As we've seen in the book of Timothy chapter 2 verses 26, that they will come to their senses that means that one of the signs of captivity one of the signs of bondage is when the evil one comes into people's lives and their minds are taken off their senses are taken off their senses are covered it is very possible to do something out of your senses not knowing that you're under captivity not knowing that you're under the bondage of the evil one so People's senses are taken when they become captives of the devil and this captivity is brought as a result 
of the bondage that people enter when they receive things that are offered by the devil through his temptation one of the things that we are saying that as much as we want certain things in life as much as we are in need of certain things in life you need to be very very careful that on the level when you are in need of something on a level when you are wanting something in life there is also the devil who comes in with this temptation as we saw on wednesday and also on sunday god never tempts us that is what james says in the book of james chapter one god never tempts us but yes god can test us but god never tempts us so the temptations that come away come from the evil one did you know many times when you are in need many times when we are in need many times when we are in want of certain things in life also the devil begins to bargain over our lives how does he bargain he comes in through his temptation trying to show us that he can also offer what we want and what we need so a result of captivity which begins from the devil binding people through what he offers unto people people when they reach that level when they are bound and when they are in captivity their senses are off they do things they don't understand so what the devil does he offers things unto people but while as is meeting and supplying the needs and what people want in in return he turns people into captivity by binding them through the things that they've received we saw and we've been seeing and we're gonna see in the book of Luke chapter 4 verses 5 Satan comes where Jesus is remember Satan has been fasting he has been in the presence of remember Jesus has been fasting he has been in the presence of God and then who shows up Satan shows up after he had fasted for 40 days the first thing that happened to him he went angry and then the first temptation that the devil brought because he thought that Jesus needed the bread he thought that Jesus needed to eat something the first temptation that he brought is to tell Jesus to turn the stones into bread if he was the son of God and the first temptation Jesus overcame it now we are seeing in verses 5 he takes him in a moment of time and instantly he shows him the kingdom of the world then in verses 6 Satan said unto Jesus that this authority in other words the power I will give it to you and their glory in other words now he shows him things that are in the world but I believe because the devil is a liar because now he's demanding worship I don't think that the devil was gonna give Jesus had Jesus bowed down before him the things that he showed him so child of God this is why you need to be very very careful on a level when you are in need of something on a level when you want something in life that is when also the temptations of the devil come in why does the devil use temptation that is his greatest weapon that he uses to make people to be swayed away from God to make people to be swayed away from the ways of God he uses temptation as his greatest weapon to take people into captivity and also to bind people so now the devil comes where Jesus is Satan comes where Jesus is now what is so amazing is this he continues to say in NLT version because they are mine I give the things to anyone I please so through the things that the devil offers unto people's lives to people you may think that your need has been met you may think that what you wanted has been supplied but this is what I want you to understand what the devil is after whenever you receive anything from him because you wanted it because you needed it what he does is to turn your life into captivity through what he has given you and that is why you see captivity is so wide today is so broad today even believers are a captive of the evil one many people are in church many people are bound and the problem to very many people who are in captivity to a problem to very many people who are bound they don't know that they're in captivity they don't know that they are bound and that is the greatest challenge 
Because today, what people think that the bondage that is in church, the captivity that is in church, when people begin to pray and evil forces begin to scream on people, those are the people who are bound. So if you have been coming to church and you've never shaken or probably shouted or anything like that happened to you, for you, you think you are free. But let me tell you something captivity is broad and the bondage of the evil one is broad what you must understand is one thing yes i'm in need yes i want something in life but who must be my supplier to very many people they don't even understand that this is a temptation that the devil has brought their way but that is why you see whatever has come from the devil because it has got bondage and captivity upon it it could it begins to tighten up your life and your life begins to deteriorate in a way you can't understand so child of god today i want you to understand this you have the life in god which life must portray the glory of God and the blessing of God upon your life. So the devil makes sure that he turns people's lives into captivity by holding them, by holding people's senses. Very many people are in salvation, very many people are in church, but yet their senses are not with them. Remember the Bible has said, and they will come to their senses. Who are these? The people who have been held through what they wanted and what they needed the people who have been bound by the evil one and they shall come to their senses and escape from the trap of the enemy who has taken them captive to do his will to very many people are do are busy doing the will of the devil they're not doing the will of god that is why you see today in church it is very common you don't have a car you don't have a phone you're not looking good you're not smelling nice you are bound people now have become so much materialistic they think that being being in such a state it is what shows the glory of god upon someone's life yet to very many people such a state is a state of captivity such a state is a state of bondage is it bad to have all that it is not but the answer is this where did you get whatever you have in your life from because whatever you get from god the blessing of god never comes with sorrow but whatever the devil will release unto your life it will come with sorrow and when sorrow begins to manifest it manifests through bondage and captivity so to many people because they are a captive unto the evil one their senses are taken off and what is the danger when you are in a life whereby you don't live in your proper senses what is behind you not living in your senses and why is timothy saying that people must come back to their senses and that is why i'm here today to very many of you because of what is happening in the world and the situations and the challenges that have risen to very many people that is how they are swayed by the evil one to be led into temptation Remember, we've already seen Jesus telling his disciples the way how they can overcome temptation is to know one thing. However much there is something that I need, however much there is something that I want, what I must do, I must be repentant. And we've seen that through repentance, we receive the righteousness of God and our lives are made right and we are established in God and the oppression and the terror of the evil one is far from us. So now when you are in righteousness, that means that however much the devil comes through temptation, the Lord is with you and you're still in the ways of God. That means that he can't devour you. That is why he told, he, told, he gave them a prayer as he was teaching them how to pray in the book of Luke chapter 11, that when you pray, say, that is verses 2. Then he tells them in verses 3, ask God to give you your daily bread. And then in verses 4, he tells them as you're busy waiting, as you're busy waiting upon God to give you what you need and what you want, you must be a repentant person so that in repentance you are established in God's righteousness so that you are not led into temptation so that you're delivered from the evil one. To very many people, they don't know that other part of temptation and the devil devouring them. Many times the devil comes in because of what you want and what you need through his temptation as it brings bondages and captivity into people's lives. And now when the people are taken hold of the evil one through what they wanted and what they needed in life, 
their senses are taken off so when your senses are gone that means now your life is in a position whereby you are lacking the wisdom of God which brings good judgment in your life did you know that to very many people who don't understand that there are people also who don't have senses but yet you are living with them and moving with them and probably it is you watching me your senses were taken and where you are today you don't have godly wisdom whenever their senses are taken that means you are in a state of lack of godly wisdom which brings good judgment and because you don't have good judgment that means that you don't have the knowledge which brings discernment in your life and these things are very very important child of God know this very well wherever the godly knowledge is the knowledge of God can't allow you to be bound can't allow you to be a captive of the evil one because this wisdom of God this wisdom of God that brings good judgment that results into the knowledge of God and the discernment of God in our lives whenever you have it that means you're in your senses but if you're a kind of person who does not have this godly wisdom that results into good judgment that brings the knowledge of God and discernment of God in our life in your life that means your senses are not off why is it that your senses are not off because to most people when that is lacking in your life this is when your understanding is darkened by the evil one because wisdom results into knowledge and knowledge brings understanding in our lives to very many people the kind of understanding when your senses are taken off and you are trapped in what you wanted and needed because it came through temptation and you are swayed away from God's will and now you are in the will of the evil one that means now your understanding is gonna be darkened in your life and when your understanding is darkened in your life you lose what we call common sense this is a statement that most people hear yes since you don't have common sense but let me tell you something what people think that is common sense is not common sense common sense comes as a result of you having the knowledge the wisdom of God which brings the knowledge of God and the knowledge of God brings the understanding of God and let me tell you this as the wisdom of God begins to operate in our lives because we have not yielded unto temptation as the wisdom of God begins to operate into our lives wisdom the first thing it will bring it will bring good judgment you will begin to judge over a lot of issues in your life and when you have good judgment this is where the knowledge of God develops in us as the knowledge of God develops in us in this knowledge we acquire what they call discernment you can discern and say yes I can't have this yes this can not get into me however much I'm in need then because now you have the wisdom of God your senses have not yet been taken off and where knowledge is discernment comes in and discernment when you have discernment in life that is when you begin to have godly understanding in you but if that is not there that means that now the understanding that is godly is not going to be there and it is through understanding that will receive common sense so if you don't have the understanding of God you're not going to have common sense you're going to be falling in a category of people where their senses have been taken off and because their senses have been taken off that means people begin to move in what the devil's offered unto them and remember all this began from what you wanted and what you needed so now because you don't have the senses and you don't have the understanding of God in your life that means now the understanding that you have is being darkened by the evil one this is when you lose the common sense and when you don't have common sense that means you will never have success in your life and insight of a lot of things in your life very very many people are believing God for success every time and again people are praying for the blessings of God to come down upon their lives but child of God where we are we are dealing with life 
you have a life that you're living in God. I have a life that I'm living in God. How do we reach a level of success in God? And how do we reach a level of having insight, a deeper insight of the Spirit of God inside of our lives? This is what we are saying. To very many people, they think, dreaming, having dreams, I dreamt, I can see. That is an insight. And all over a sudden, then people begin to say, she's a prophet, I am a prophet, I see deeper in the Spirit. Did you know, you, everyone is meant as a child of God to have deeper insight of things because this is what you are created to be in God everyone is meant to hear the voice of God so to some people because they have their senses and they have the wisdom which brings all this the wisdom of God the knowledge of God the understanding of God child of God these are things that every believer is meant to have this is what they call the proper image of God in us so that means that the devil fights it and he knows it very well that when you don't become what you are meant to be in God you're gonna be his captive you're gonna be bound by him and when you're bound by him when you are bound bondage is gonna lead to captivity and when you're in captive or when you're in captivity that means you don't have common sense and there will never be success and there will never be deeper insight of things in your life now instead what is going to happen your mind is going to be filled with evil thoughts ideas and evil plans can you imagine as the devil came in remember we are seeing that all this happens because of what we want and what we need and the devil that is why he comes in most people's lives what you wanted what you needed because you never received it from god you are tempted and remember this that everyone is tempted and we've seen this before everyone is tempted you see even he comes to tempt jesus but what the way he finds you if you are in god and grounded in god then you're not going to be swayed away by his temptation but if you're not grounded in god it is very easy for you to be tempted and what the devil is looking at he's looking at binding you and taking you as a captive taking off your senses and when your senses are taken off as we are seeing then now your mind is darkened as your mind is darkened this is when people begin to be filled with evil thoughts also with bad ideas and also with the evil plans of darkness in their lives the book of ephesians ephesians chapter 4 verses 18 what am i trying to say in the book of ephesians chapter 4 verses 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened now how have the people reached a level of their understanding being darkened the bible continues to say because their minds were darkened see what the bible continues to say in nlt version the same scripture where we are in nlt the bible says because now their minds are darkened they don't have their senses they are now at the center of evil they can have evil thoughts they can have evil ideas even evil plans can begin to manifest through their lives that means at this stage they wonder far, they wonder they wonder that is what nlt version is saying that these people now at this stage they wander far from the life they wander from the life god gives because they have closed their minds and have hardened their hearts against god so this is how the devil fights if you thought that the devil is just gonna come and manifest and say now here here i am let us begin to fight he does not fight that way he comes he begins from the section of the mind when he has held the mind now he goes into the heart now watch this now because your mind has been darkened what the devil now knows because you can't understand you can't have good judgment you can't have insight you can't have discernment inside of you this is how you got, begin to be far from the life that god gives now that means you are not moving in the life that god gives but you are moving in the life that the devil has given you and the result is going to be your heart being hardened now when your heart is hardened against god that means now your heart because it's the one that causes the eyes of your of your mind to receive understanding but now because your heart is hardened 
unto God, your eyes of understanding are not going to be enlightened to see what you must be doing in the life that God gave you. And that is very, very important. That means now your heart is going to be shifted because now it can't be, it can't bring enlightenment for you to know what to do in salvation and also in the life of God. Now you are covered. What begins to happen now, you fail even to know the hope of why God called you into salvation so that your life can reach a level of being connected to the riches of glory which are in Christ Jesus which is your inheritance as a saint so all these things you fail to understand them you fail to understand that in God there is an inheritance you fail to understand that in God there are riches you fail to understand what to do in salvation you fail to understand what to do in God and today that is what is happening People are confused everywhere people don't know what to do in salvation people don't know what to do in God and it seems as though salvation is religion it seems as though God is weak yet God has never been weak when you fail to do your part when you fail to discover who you are in God you're gonna fail in a lot of things yet the life that we have in God it's the best life that we can live in in this world. The life that we have in God is the life that God created human beings to be in. Remember from the beginning when God had created man. He created man in his own image and also after his own likeness. So it is ever the devil who comes in to trace man. To make sure that man never understands and knows what the will of God is for his life. So now because the heart is hardened against God that means you can't even understand and know what the purposes of God are what the plans of God are in your life but where did all this begin from from a level of you wanting and needing things in life yes we all need things in life we all want things in life but who is the giver of what you want who is the giver of what you need in God through his divine power as second Peter says chapter 1 verse 3 this power that is divine that works in us gives us all things pertaining to life and also godliness but when you are out of your senses you are out of your mind you are not gonna receive all this it will be as though salvation is a myth it will be as though salvation is religion today people are suffering from pulpit to congregation today people are struggling with a lot of issues in life not knowing one thing that they are already bound they are already a captive of the evil one so child of God as we are reading in scripture that their hearts are hardened and when their hearts are hardened they are against God this is how now the devil begins to operate by bringing ignorance into people's lives people become ignorant of what must be done in life because in new king james version see what the bible says that having their understanding darkened and then what is going to happen because they are darkened they are annihilated from the life of god because of the ignorance that is in them to very many people their problem is ignorance to very many people people are ignorant People don't know what to do in God though they are in God people don't know what to do in life though they are in the life of salvation that is why now salvation has become like religion people are just copying what others are doing because in them they are not enlightened their hearts now are blinded their hearts are blinded and when the devil has taken you to that level of blinding your heart that means he's gonna operate in ignorance through your life so in people's lives because of this blindness of heart through the blindness the devil never allows people to be focused or centered on things of God or things above that is now another danger because now the devil knows very well the only way to control you very well though you claim I am saved though you claim I'm in church what he begins to do because now he's up he has made your heart to be hardened against 
God so that means that in ignorance he begins to do a lot of things in your life he'll never allow your heart to be focused or centered on things above or on godless things but rather what he does he hardens your heart so that your heart can be against the will of God and the purposes of God by setting your heart on the things of this world today the world has entered church you begin to ask yourself how come believers are behaving like people of the world how come believers want things the way how the world wants them how come believers are in need of things the way how the world also needs things the answer is simple people are bound but because people think that bondage is about people shouting <laughs> demons screaming on them did you know even because in church the last level of the kingdom of darkness is what church is dealing with these demons but yet there's principalities they are rulers of darkness did you know that they are also powers of darkness because see see the hierarchy of the evil one when when Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 12 see what we fight against child of God see what we fight against we fight against principalities that is the top we fight against powers we fight against rulers of darkness of this age we fight against spiritual hosts of of wickedness in heavenly places now look at look at this in nlt nlt version says that we fight against evil rulers we fight against authorities of unseen world we fight against mighty powers in this dark world we fight against evil spirits now to very many people they are on that level and moreover the spirits they are fighting they, they, are, they don't go off people but they just disorganize the spirits upon people's lives people are everywhere saying we need deliverance and people who are ever in deliverance are the ones who are becoming worse child of god let me tell you this bondage and captivity begins by senses being held and when your senses are held that means now you don't have the godly wisdom you don't have the godly knowledge and the understanding which bring good judgment in our lives which bring discernment in our life which bring insight in our lives that cause us to be in our mind that cause us to be in our right senses in the life that we have in God so child of God be very very careful because where we are today we are dealing with a practical life God wants your life to be better than how it has been before and why I'm here is to deliver you why I'm here is to take you out from wherever your life has been so that you can begin to live this life of salvation that God has given you to a level where people will see the glory of God upon your life in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ so now what the devil does because the minds are taken off and now the hearts are hardened that means now people can't center on things above people can't center on things that are godly now what people begin to do is to focus or to set their hearts on the things of this world remember when your senses are taken as we are seeing in timothy chapter 2 verses 26 you begin to do the will of the evil one can you imagine other than doing the will of god you begin to do the will of the evil one and what the devil does and we're gonna see this he begins to put your life on a level of you wanting time and again of you needing in life time and again but how far are you going to reach? How far are you going to reach in such a life? That is why today, today is a day of turning around in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord has come to put your life on track. The Lord has come to show you that there is this better side of Him in your life that can make your life to be a better life in Jesus' mighty name. So as people's hearts are set on things of this world, then that means now you become a friend to this world now some of you may say for me i'm not a friend of this world but let me tell you something it does not need you to be in the world no having what belongs to the evil one in your life having what you wanted and what you needed which was offered unto you by the evil one it turns you to become a friend to this world 
the Bible says in John chapter 2 verses 16 for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure a craving for everything we see and pride in our achievement and possession these are not from the father but they are from this world I repeat it again first John chapter 2 verses 16 NLT version what does the Bible say in first John chapter 2 verses 16 the Bible says for the world offers only a craving can you imagine so that means now what the devil does is to put you in a position of you craving for things that will bring pleasure to you physically so as you are craving for what you want you begin to crave for everything that you see this is when what you want what you need in life if you don't get it it is as though you're gonna die have you seen people because they are not yet married every time and again all they're thinking about marriage 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 have you seen people because of what they need that is where their focus is 24 7 yet the Bible tells us to seek first the kingdom of God as we've seen in the previous services and his righteousness then what we need then what we want is what is added unto us but when it comes to the devil because now he has made you his captive your senses are off now your heart is hardened against the purposes of God and the will of God he sets your heart on things of this world and then he puts you in a position of being a friend to the world and when you become a friend to the world remember what you wanted and what you needed he has met it he has supplied it that is where bondage begins from that is where captivity begins from so now he's controlling you through what he has given you and now he takes you to a level of craving you crave for this you crave for that no wonder people are not satisfied today you have a million shilling tomorrow you want 10 you remember you save 10 the other day you want 20 and when you don't have 20 and you have no way of getting it then you go in a wrong way of receiving that money you go in a wrong way of your need being met you go in a wrong way of what you want being supplied so that craving and the lasting is from the devil so if you're a child of god and you are craving over certain things lasting over certain things thinking if i don't get this i'm gonna die i'm gonna die you reach a time and it is as though even your heart wants to jump out of you definitely no that is a sign of captivity definitely no that is a sign of bondage being a friend to this world brings more lasting and craving for what you want and need and when you last over what you want when you crave over what you need however much you've got it you will last for something else but in God we receive satisfaction we begin to understand that what we have is enough for us and it is this spirit that does that which the devil does not do and to the people he has bound and to the people he has made captives so this is what i want you to understand that being a friend to the world you're gonna last more for what you want you're gonna crave more for what you need and then you're gonna find yourself every day entering bondage every day entering entering captivity and because of what you wanted because of what you needed in life that is why in the same book where we are first john chapter 2 verses 15 we are told by the word of god not to love the world and also the things that are in the world and the bible continues to say that if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him so whenever you find yourself being drawn and to things of the world because of what you need and because of what you want no one thing the love of god shifted from your life i love what believers used to say a long time ago in the in church you know i know myself i'm a church boy those days when i was still young 
the kind of message that used to be preached and the kind of words that used to be spoken by a lot of people in church whenever people would rise up they would say people have drifted from the love of god let us go back to the first love it was a common saying but child of god let me tell you this god wants your love for him he does not want you to shift from his love to the love of the world the world may meet what you want the world may give you what you need but let me tell you this that is not going to take you far because every time and again it's not going to make your life better it's going to take your life far into destruction it's going to take your life far into bondage it's going to take your life far into captivity so when your life begins to last or crave for what you want or need in life as i've said it is a sign of captivity it is a sign of bondage you who's watching me child of god are you a kind of person who's ever in need because today that is what is in church people are in need they are in need of this they are in need of that they are in need of this they are in need of that do you find yourself every time in need and want know it very well at such a time as that also the devil is bargaining your life and he wants to come in or he can come in through his temptation and if you're not a person who is in the ways of god and grounded in god which repentance does you are not gonna be delivered from the evil one the evil one is gonna take hold of you so as people enter into captivity and bondage because their minds are held they are not in their right senses of thinking right people enter a state where they lack the godly wisdom in their lives and because they don't have this godly wisdom that brings good judgment that leads to the knowledge of god and because even the knowledge of god that brings discernment is not there that means people don't have now they reach a level when they don't have good insight in their lives and that is what bondage is about if you thought bondage is about hey we are not going we are 50 we are no 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 bondage listen to me very well bondage comes in whereby the senses of people are held are taken off and when they are taken off listen to me very well people now don't think right and they find themselves in the state where they don't have godly wisdom in their life which brings good judgment and this good judgment bring results into the knowledge and where the knowledge is the knowledge brings discernment which leads to good which leads to good insight in our lives so if all that is not there that means that this now is bondage that is moving in your life that is going to lead you unto captivity so this is why this is why bondage will begin to bring to manifest or bring forth the manifestation of captivity publicly did you know it begins by you being bound and then when captivity has increased in your life captivity begins to display your bondage publicly that is why the bible says as he sinketh in his heart so is he so now your thinking your heart is taken off god your thinking is now because you are bound whatever is inside of you bondage just begins to take you into captivity and captivity begins to manifest who you are let me tell you something people are on the pulpit and they're bound and they're in the devil's captivity but because most people have not crossed over to be in god to understand such people you think it is all right how can you be a minister of god and stand on the pulpit and say even though god came and spoke to me concerning this issue i will not accept a man and a creator who's greater you think what is that that is public public captivity and child of god know this very well if today you don't believe god for a change the devil wants to put you on a public platform to display or to manifest the bondage that is inside of you you begin to do things that are so terrible your senses are taken off you don't do things in the right way at this level when captivity is now manifesting publicly upon your life because people think that people are bound and people are shouting in church you can put on a tie you can put on a coat you can even look smart before the people but yet 
you are already a captive of the evil one he can use you to do anything publicly that is wrong you can even go ahead and begin to burn the word of god publicly what is that captivity so i'm telling you child of god captivity is everywhere captivity is on platforms captivity is in congregation captivity is everywhere people are bound people are captives of the evil one and all this began from a level of what you wanted of what you needed you are not able to wait upon the lord because look at this the bible says in james as we saw on sunday chapter 1 verses 12 see what the bible says in the book of james because the captivity of the evil one and also the bondage of the evil one comes in through the temptation that the devil begins to bring unto people's lives the bible says in the book of james chapter 1 verses 12 see what nlt version says nlt version says in the book of james chapter 1 verses 12 that god blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation there are people who are not patient you're not patient for your marriage you're not patient for your promotion you're not patient for your for, for finances you're not patient in life you are saying time has gone yet god is never slow because you're not patient you yield unto temptation and the bible says after after afterwards those people who are patient in god they receive a crown of life that god has promised to those that love him now you see what is the crown of life the crown of life is this life that i'm talking about we were given the life of salvation not to suffer in it but to very many people they are saved while bound they are saved while in captivity the way how people are doing things it is a sign that there is a problem they are not in their right senses they are already trapped by the evil one for you are waiting to fall in church you're waiting to scream in church so when you come in church and nothing has happened like to some people who say for me i've never shaken at all for me i've never fallen at all and they are very comfortable thinking they are okay yet you there is just this level of evil spirits as we've seen but there are also other levels which levels are these because what we are fighting against child of god listen to this yes the last level is of evil spirits but there is also mighty powers in darkness let us use new king james version new king james version says this look at this there is wickedness in heavenly places which are evil spirits but there is also spiritual hosts there is also rulers of darkness there are also powers of darkness and principalities do you know what rule what do rulers do what do principalities do principalities govern a place a church may enter a place like there is a place that i hear of that is called monaco have you ever reached such a place you reach there and see the kind of people that live in that place in monaco here people are poor it is a principality that is holding that place my, my i had a grandfather who passed away he was called jajamiti here at nabulagala where he stays the road where he stays is the road that takes dead people dead kings into the place where they bury them here at kasubi tombs but reach that place and see no one in that place lived longer people died it's a place of death and everyone who puts a business there the business dies child of god if you don't know what we are fighting against if you don't know i was talking to my wife a pastor olivia and i said you know what is about chanchima the place called chanchima do you know the principality of chanchima you go look in that place what that principality did is to first take husbands out of marriages and all those people are widows over there child of god people are just saying devil go devil go i received the revelation and this opened up my eyes many times we send fire to the devil fire devil fire devil fire but do you know he's already in hell he's enjoying he's in hell being burnt. now what kind of fire are you gonna release upon him the fire of god is burning him 24 7 and here you are devil fire fire now he is already in hell he is already in fire the only way we can escape all this when we've understood the 
kind of life we have in God and live it and follow what the word of God says and the principles of God that is the only way if the devil can come to attack Jesus he can attack anyone and he can mess up anybody are you hearing what I'm saying are you hearing what I'm saying so child of God know what you are dealing with it is not just the demon that you're chasing it is a life you must live which is a life of God when they tell you that this kingdom that you belong to suffers violence and the violent people take it by force it advances by force time and again 24 7 there is someone who never wants you to live in the life of God and be better are you hearing what I'm saying and who has all this hierarchy So as a man sinketh in his heart, so is he. So when you are held captive from the mind, that means whatever you're going to think about, evil ideas, evil plans, and even you yourself, because now your heart is against God. Everything you're going to be doing is going to be because of the evil one, which can't allow you to prosper. At this level when your life is and is in captivity you become unstable in a lot of things you hear people say you know for me if you want marriage come to such and such a place the place where they are going he was delivering the wife went long time ago now what kind of deliverance are you gonna receive which kind of authority does he have over marriage yet he himself has no marriage so those are the things I'm saying. People are on the pulpit bound. People are everywhere as a captive of the evil one. But people don't understand that. Where are you going? I'm going this way. For what? They, Munange, they teach you how to chase the Kaula spirits. And they teach you how to prepare. For the one who is busy teaching has no marriage. Now what is he teaching? Which authority is he standing on? To release such into people's lives. So if you don't understand such a kind of life. You're going to be a person who's landing in the hands of someone who's already bound. And because he's bound as you're going to see scripture say. Because they were deceived they also deceive others. How long are you going to be deceived in church? How long are you going to be deceived in church? Anyone can read scripture. Even the devil can quote scripture. Because he quoted scripture before Jesus. But when you've understood that in your life you need to be in your right senses that is when you can escape all that but if you're not in your right senses what has befallen another person is knocking at your door because the enemy is the same that we are fighting so at the level of bondage and captivity you become unstable in a lot of things the evil one begins to destroy every kind of foundation that can make your life better and that is what is so bad about the the evil one you began by wanting something by needing something for him he knows it very well if he can have room into your life and you receive what he has given you and you receive what you want what is going to happen the next thing is going to be and listen to me very well the next thing is going to be him destroying every foundation in your life that can make you better now you lose the ability to understand you lose the ability to understand what to do in life do you lose the ability to understand to do the right thing and also the good things in your life this is when many people begin to say i don't know i don't know whatever i do in my life does not proceed and then someone stands and say i can see whatever you're doing in your life does not proceed yes man of god yes man of god he stays on a level of seeing but he can't deliver you deliverance is about as we are gonna see when you are delivered you are meant to be restored and when you are restored you're meant to be given your position 
people seeing you everywhere i can see this i can and you get excited after seeing what is next after deliverance restoration must come in you must be restored to that position where you lost your stuff you must be restored to that position where you can do even much more better and then after restoration when you receive your position that portrays the kind of life you are meant to be living as God created you in this world in Jesus mighty name so the devil comes in and when he has come in he begins to destroy every foundation that can make your life better so you lose the ability to understand to do what is right and what is good in your life the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 82 verses 5 because now you don't have the understanding what happens they don't know nor do they understand they walk in darkness all the foundations of the earth are unstable here you don't have understanding you don't have the ability to do what is right you don't have the understanding to do what you're meant to be doing in life that means now your life is on a level of being unstable whatever you enter whatever you plan to do whatever you want to do can't even proceed now whom are they talking about because you may think that now they're talking about those who are in the world no i'm talking about you child of god who's looking at me i'm talking about you man you woman i'm talking about you who is in church and then they don't know nor do understand they don't know nor do they understand they walk about in darkness all the foundation of the earth are unstable who are these verses 6 the bible says look at this in verses 6 i said you are gods and all of you children of the most high now they're trying to bring out your identity yes you are unstable yes you don't know what to do but you're a child of god so if you're a child of god what must you do a child of god must have proper senses a child of god must not be trapped where the devil's traps are you must be above because whatever is born of god overcomes the world if you are born of god you must be an overcomer because inside of you when you walk in the ways of god and become a doer of the word you're gonna be led by the spirit of god and when you're led by the spirit of god the spirit of god never takes you into error but because of what people need because of what people want they come away from the ways of god and they improvise as themselves yet they are taking themselves into bondage yet they are taking themselves into captivity everyone who has entered bondage everyone who has entered the captivity of the evil one never be deceived it was because of what they wanted it was because of what they needed to very many people think bondage is brought by witchcraft to very many people say you know that one was bewitched but let me tell you something there is bondage that comes in are you hearing what i'm saying there is captivity that comes in that has nothing to do with witchcraft but it was best on what you wanted it was best on what you needed and then the devil got a room to come into your life i said you are gods and all of you are children of the most high now when you don't take your position as a child of god and be a child of god and move as a child of god then he says in verses 7 but you shall die <laughs> but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes refuse to die like others refuse to be a captive like others in church refuse to be bound like others in church people are bound you look at a believer the way she or he talks the way they live is bondage see the houses where people are living see the kind of things people are doing in life you see what is the problem people are bound yet to them they know they are okay but people are bound the way they dress shows you how they are bound the way they talk shows you how they are bound the way they do things shows you how they are bound and if you don't work on yourself from bondage
bondage you're taken into captivity and then when you reach a level of captivity captivity displays every kind of bondage that is inside of you you can't hide yourself when you have reached a level of being a captive of the evil one he displays you publicly everywhere so when you lose your understanding as a child of god even your position of living better in this world is going to be compromised the devil will fight to and nail for people never to go back for people never to go back to their god-given positions of living better that is what the devil is fighting he is fighting your life he doesn't want you to live better he doesn't want you to do better in life he doesn't want you to do greater things that is why he bounds you that is why he takes you as his captive for you never to be better at all in everything that you do to be a mediocre for you never to do great things and that is what is happening in church everything to do with believers is substandard everything to do with believers is bad why because many are bound many are captives but i'm here to say you can no longer stay bound you can no longer stay captive this is your season to be delivered child of god this is your season to live better this is your season to do greater things in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ for the devil may fight to nail for people never to go back to their positions of living better by achieving their goals and purposes in life there is a god who can restore you there is a god who can deliver you Ever when the devil looks at people, he is fighting against the achievements of life that they can have. He is fighting against the goals that people can meet. He is fighting against the purposes that people have in life. He fights so much for people not to be on a level of living better and doing greater things in life. That is why their senses are taken off. He comes and begins to attack people. Do you know very many people are being attacked through jobs? You don't understand what took you from a previous job. For you are just saying, I'm changing career. I'm changing jobs. You go to another job. They make you to work from morning to night. They make you to be so busy. You are so busy upon the job. And you forget even to do other things. No wonder when people are cut off work. They're like crazy. Yet you add all your effort into that job until recently. I never knew that also the devil can take people and bind you through education. He makes you read and read from one course to another. And read and read and read and read and read. And even you grow old reading. It reaches a time other than applying what you've read. Everywhere you go, they are paying cheap money i read my books yet it is bondage bondage can't allow you to work bondage just makes you to stay at what at, at reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading no wonder people say people have read so much sometimes are confused do you know why they say so they are seeing a sign of captivity upon you the devil takes people abroad you sell off your property you sell off your inheritance you sell off everything just in the name of a ticket and you give all that in an air ticket and you go abroad leaving nothing behind and you reach abroad you have three jobs you're just switching from one job to another working too much and meeting on the bills bills people are busy saying i have my sister i have my brother abroad yet you're just working and working but never developing yourself and even never developing other people what is that captivity what is that that is bondage so the devil at many people he can attack you through a business and you begin to borrow from monday to monday you are borrowing trying to put more money in a business this business must work yet it is captivity you are injecting in more money and at the end of it all they begin to demand money from you and they take everything in the name of a business he can attack and he can attack the ministry it happened to Paul, the slave girl who had a familiar spirit. 
began to tell people that this is a man of God but because Paul was in his, his senses he silenced the woman he silenced the slave girl and then he was taken to court because all the spirits left this slave girl and their masters and the masters or the bosses of this girl stopped receiving money how many of you like me okay let me use my example I'm a preacher I would like someone to say you preach good I would want someone to say pastor your message was so wonderful but because he was in his senses his ministry was not, was not attacked. There are very many ministries that have been attacked. And as I speak right now, a ministry has become a burden to you. It is a yoke unto your life. And now everything is so hard. Whenever you hear somebody make a statement, Hey, my friend, don't joke with ministry. Ministry is not food. You definitely know bondage. You definitely know captivity. Ministry, it is God who works through us. That is what Philippians says. He works through us. And you, Let's read it. See what the Bible says in Philippians 2.13. The Bible says in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 13, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Now, and you begin to say, ministry is difficult. That is bondage. Ministry now has become a burden unto you. It is a yoke now. And if you are yoked, and if you are under a burden, that means things are going to be hard. So child of God, I want you to understand this. The devil can attack your family. And very many things happen through families. And it makes that family to be bound. You may have money, but no marriages in that family. You may have read books, but no jobs in that family. The devil comes and attacks everything that can make you better. Not wanting you to be better. But I'm here to say today, God is coming to deliver you in Jesus' name. The devil can attack marriage. What you wanted so much, you receive it. And in your marriage here you are. You're busy asking yourself, why did I get married to this woman? Why did I get married to this man? Going home, it is as though you've gone to hell. You are in pain. Yet marriage is a blessing that God brings unto people's lives for people to live better. So that he blesses the generation that has come out of them. So child of God, this is what I want you to understand. He attacks everything that can make you better in life he will attack the goals he will attack the purposes in your life to bind you to turn you into a captivity and i end with this did you know that the devil now is using the need of money to take very many people into captive so many 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 people have been bound because of money have been bound because of captivity and the devil knows it very well he knows it he knows it that money the love of money is the root of all evil he knows it so in you he makes sure that you are ever in need of money 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 no wonder today even ministers are serving for money even pastors are ministering for money everyone money everyone money but money and to the devil is getting many many captives he's getting very many people it is very possible and to very many people because they love money it's not God who gives them the money people are improvising how to get money in their lives and that is what the devil wants so that he can tempt you so that he can sway you and when he has tempted you he binds you he makes you a captive. He takes your senses off. And when you are his captive, that is when he does whatever he wants to do in your life. I'm here to say, there is a God who has come to deliver you. There is a God who has come to restore you. You have goals in life. You have purposes in life that you must achieve. And you're going to achieve them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, I want you to lift up those hands and speak these words. And say, Lord Jesus, this is my time to be better in life. 
in Jesus name never allow me to be bound and to be a captive of the evil one now what does God do this is what God does where there is bondage where there is captivity the Lord comes and delivers you I stand today on this pulpit in the name of Jesus Christ and I deliver you father God my vision is to restore people and to restore people's lives oh God and also to restore nations in Jesus name I stand under the authority of the Holy Spirit and I stand in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and I lift up my hands in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare deliverance and to every man and woman who is listening to me and who's watching me right now in Jesus mighty name I stand and I declare deliverance upon ministers of God deliverance upon people of God deliverance upon your lives in Jesus name yes you may be a minister you may be a pastor you may be anything you may have a title upon you this is not about a title tonight and to right now it's about your life being delivered from bondage and captivity these are the words of Jesus these are not my words in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 he says come to me all of you who labor who are weary you who carry heavy laden's I will give you rest yes it is very possible but ministry right now you're laboring in ministry ministry has become so heavy upon your life yes it is very possible child of God you who's watching me you who's listening to me you're laboring in a lot of things you have gone weary and now whatever you're doing has become a burden upon you the Bible says in verses 30 for your for the yoke of God is easy and his burden is light that means there are certain ministers ministry has become a yoke it has become a burden but let me tell you something a yoke and a burden upon you can't make things better you need to enter the rest of God I stand right now and I deliver you ministers of God be delivered are you having oh my God a burden because of ministering God of ministering because of ministering are you having a burden in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ has it become a yoke upon you I think so terrible in your life be delivered in Jesus mighty name ministers of God if you have a heavy burden upon you it and ministry has turned to become a yoke in Jesus mighty name you have labored and labored today I deliver you I declare the rest of God upon your lives in Jesus' mighty name. By the power of the Holy Ghost, Father, I deliver ministers right now. Look at their tears. They've been laboring in the name of Jesus Christ. They have yokes upon them. They have burdens upon them. Be delivered. Let ministries be delivered, oh God. Let churches be delivered, oh my God. I declare deliverance upon ministers in Jesus' name. If you have nothing to do, you have nothing to eat, you have nothing to put on, I declare deliverance upon you in Jesus' mighty name. May God deliver you right now in Jesus' mighty name. I declare deliverance right now. This is a very important moment in Jesus' mighty name. There is a lot of captivity. There is a lot of bondage right now. But the Spirit of God is breaking. There are certain ministers. They are taking your senses off. You things out of your mind but I stand as a servant of God I stand as a prophet of God I declare deliverance in Jesus name be delivered right now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ Father God let your deliverance power begin to deliver pastors begin to deliver ministers begin to deliver your people in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ people of God be delivered be delivered come out from those places where your lives were put come out from those places of bondage come out from those places in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ as I stand right now, the Spirit of God.
God is going into homes. There are homes that have been disorganized by the evil one. The devil has put bondages upon homes in Jesus' mighty name. I declare homes to be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. You are in a home. You are ever renting from place to place. You're coming from one place to another. You can't settle. You can't have your own house. Today I stand to say whatever belongs to homes, you devil, that you've been holding, from it down in Jesus' mighty name. Let homes receive the peace of God in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are certain homes, your children are disobedient, your children are stubborn, your children have become something else. I stand to say in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, as it is written in the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 30, that our children shall serve the Lord. And this is a future, this is a future generation that will hear the wonders of the Lord. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I stand to declare in Jesus' man and name, let children come back to their senses. Let children be better in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You devil, I destroy you. I adjure you to leave homes alone in Jesus' man and name. Let there be deliverance in homes. Homes that have no peace. Homes that have nothing to do. Homes that are disorganized. Homes that are in fear. Homes that have been destroyed by the powers of darkness. Let there be restoration in homes in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let children be obedient to their parents. Let children be obedient to their parents in Jesus' name. Let they honor their mothers and fathers in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Ghost, children I speak to you, you shall serve the Lord. If you are a parent and you are saved, this is what I declare. Let your children serve the Lord. They will never serve the world. They will never be destroyed in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God teach your children. That is what I declare. May God provide for your children. May your children study and may your children finish in Jesus' mighty name. Let there be peace of God upon your children in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Lord is showing me something right now. God is going into homes. There are homes you've been, you've been believing God for children. You are married and you have no children. Today I stand to say, listen to me very well. One of the weapons that we fight against in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses 12 are the rulers of darkness. These rulers of darkness, they go up to generation to generation. Most times they fight against people having children. Most times they fight against children. And you married people who are believing God for marriage and your seed has been held. Your seed has been caught. Today in the name of Jesus Christ, I attack you rulers of darkness. I command you to let go of those seeds that you have been holding in Jesus name. Not wanting people to bring forth children for the next generation. I stand to say as the Bible says in Psalm chapter 22 verses 30 that our children shall serve the Lord. It is a seed that shall serve the Lord. It is a seed for the future generation in the name of Jesus Christ. You who has not been giving birth I command you now to give birth in Jesus' name. Whatever went wrong in your uterus, you gentlemen, whatever went wrong with you, I stand to declare in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let there be, let there be children in marriages that have no children in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are very, very many homes that don't have marriages. Here today I stand to say, if your family, there is no marriage in your family, I stand to release marriages in Jesus' mighty name. You rulers of darkness, you stop marriages because you know through marriages there is a generation that comes, the next generation in Jesus' mighty name. Let go of marriages by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I attack every ruler of darkness that has been fighting marriages. Today in Jesus' mighty name, let there be marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. Families that have been suffering, I release you today. I take you out of bondages in Jesus' name. Father, look at every life that has been suffering. Look at families that have been suffering. Others, they've gone abroad. They can't, they can't develop their families. They can't 
develop themselves. They are working day and night. They are receiving money to meet bills. They are receiving money. If you are abroad, listen to my voice right now. In Jesus' man and name, I release the hand of God to deliver you from that condition. You are not only going to work for bills, but you are going to develop yourself. You also develop your family. In Jesus' man and name, you devil, let go of lies. Let go of jobs. Let go of businesses. Let go of people's lives in Jesus' name. People, be delivered. People of God, be delivered in Jesus' man and name. I speak deliverance unto you. I speak deliverance right now. I speak deliverance right now. May God begin to restore you. I stand on this pulpit right now and I declare restoration. Be restored people. Be restored in your house. There are people are ever falling sick and the devil has used it to take money out of you to make sure that you are not stable in your life. I just sickness out of your bodies in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be restored in Jesus name. Father now I restore your people. Let people receive life. Let they come out of bondages. Let they come out of captivity. People of God receive life. People of God receive the God the life. Be restored in Jesus name. Father God as it is written in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 that upon Mount Zion shall be deliverous. I stand and I release your people. I stand and I speak deliverous unto your people right now. Establish your people in your ways. Let your holiness be manifested in Jesus name. As you're restoring people people of God, each home that has been affected, each family that has been affected, everyone has been affected. Right now I restore you. I command you to receive your possessions in Jesus name. I command you to receive your lives back in Jesus man and Receive your lives back by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let restoration take place right now. The Lord is restoring you. He's restoring your finances. He's restoring your ministry. He's restoring your churches in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's restoring your marriages. He's restoring your finances. The Lord is restoring you right now. I declare restoration in Jesus name. Receive your possessions. Receive your possession. Receive your possession. It is time to receive. Yes. Receive your possession. In the name of Jesus. Receive your possession.
restoration anointing. There is the power of God that is restoring you right now. God is delivering you. God is restoring you. And as I speak right now, God is bringing what is yours in Jesus' name. You are receiving back. You are receiving your position. You are receiving what belongs to you. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Receive. Receive. Receive in Jesus' name. shall possess their possession it is said in the word of God believe it and it will be done for you in Jesus mother name and from today I stand to say Satan you have no power upon those people that the Lord has delivered my God has delivered his people Oh God, when you called me, you told me to go bring your people from the hands of the evil one and put them in your hands. I stand and I deliver them. I bring them out from bondages and captivities, oh God. And right now, I put them into your hand. Restore every man and woman at the sound of my voice and give them their possessions, oh God. And let me live your presence with their possessions in Jesus' name. If you believe it, oh my God, declare a loud amen. Declare a loud amen. If you believe it, declare a loud amen in Jesus' name. You said we believe and it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. I believe. Yes.
restored. Be restored. Be delivered. Be restored. Receive your possessions in Jesus' name. He said it that upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Believe it because he said it. It will be done. I stand and I declare and to every family I stand and I declare and to every house every house at the sound of my voice every family every home at the sound of my voice receive your possessions in jesus mighty name every man every woman every boy and girl at the sound of my voice receive your possession he said it believe it he said it it is done for you in Jesus mighty name let's give God the praise let's give him praise hallelujah yes today is Sunday and every Sunday we give our tithes we give our offerings in Jesus mighty name wherever you're watching us from there is a number that is running on the screen where you can plant your seeds where you can give your offerings in Jesus name where you can give your tithes and every Sunday we give a change offering it is prophetic to us we believe God for a change yes this Sunday a lot has changed in your life give your change offering also in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ when we give our tithes the devourer is rebuked Satan is rebuked he's out of your life in Jesus name you're gonna be in your senses and you're gonna do a lot of greater things in Jesus mother name the doors of heaven are gonna open up for you that is what the seeds do seeds open up divine doors wherever you are begin to plant your seed in Jesus name I declare divine doors to be open in your lives in your homes in your families in your businesses in your jobs in Jesus mother name I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit father God this is the time of your people's deliverance this is the time of your people's restoration this is the time for people to possess what belongs to them I stand and I release life unto you and I declare restoration unto you people of God yes you can go on and give in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost father bless every man and woman as they are giving in Jesus mighty name oh, in Jesus name the unbreakable God we believe God we believe for it from the impossible we'll see a miracle God we believe God we believe for it
to declare miracles upon miracles in your lives in Jesus mighty name where bondages have been where captivity has been I declare now miracles to begin to happen may you come back to your senses to begin to do greater things in Jesus mighty name no more bondages right now no more captivity right now let the miracles of God be seen every day and from now upon your lives in Jesus mighty name if you believe it because it has been said unto you let it be so in Jesus mighty name let it be so in Jesus mighty name let it be so in Jesus mighty name and to your lives in Jesus name yes you are lovely people every day every Sunday you gather with us and we worship God together may God richly bless you may God be with you and protect you this is your season of deliverance this is your season of restoration this is your season of possession in Jesus mighty name may you receive more of the life of God be restored let there be life restoration and do your lives in Jesus mighty name may God richly bless you till we meet on Wednesday God bless you bye bye